So I've pre-made a stencil so I can just trace onto the board and not have to, you know, measure everything out for each half. Um, to do it, I wasn't, you know, super picky about it. I just made the distances between the circles, the width of a pin, um, the distances on the edge, just the width of a normal square. You can see that it just kind of fits right there and on the end here as well. And then as far as the, uh, I wanted the circles to be two inches in diameter. Let's see if we can get the focus on this two inches in diameter. And so I just used the bottom of uh, just a normal caulk little bottle right there so it fits in. So I just trace that around. Um, and how I got the two inches in diameter is because my little uh, beads that go across the center of it, um, I'll show you. So the other man collar boards that I've seen have enough beads for, um, or enough marbles to go across the circle four times. Um, that's just kind of like the proportions you need. Just finishing routing out the, uh, the dips in the board. So I have um, a big light standing up over here that I can shine in through this window so I can see the lines and where they're at. Um, so yeah, so the the bit that I'm using is called a half inch core box and then it just you know just takes out the inside of that and then I'll end up probably sanding it down and then making it all smooth. And you can see I have I've cut it a little bit long here and here so that when I get the other board, I can lay them on top of each other and then just use a table saw to cut them the exact same size that they're gonna be on the, on the finished product. So before I start tracing this other stencil, um, with my last stencil, I traced it on this side of the board. This time, I'm gonna trace it on this side of the board over here because what I wanna do is when the thing, the board is gonna end up being like this. So that's what the whole man collar board is going to look like. And it's going to be able to fold over on top of itself. Um, but the reason I need to cut it, um, I need to trim this side to length and this side to length. So if I do it on this side, when it folds over, the long end is still going to be over here. So that makes sense. You got the long end right here and the long end on this side because I'm doing it on the opposite. That way when I lay it over top of each other like this, I can just run this in through the table saw and cut off the same end on both sides and keeping it the exact same length. So I just took the two boards, laid them down on top of each other, and then slid them through the table saw, cutting off the same thickness on both the top and the bottom board. So now they're both even. So what I'm gonna do now is the ends right there where the hinge is gonna be is too long. So I'm gonna lay them on top of each other again flip them around and then chop off right here. So you can see the difference between this one which I've sanded out um, on the insides and this one which I haven't. It's just getting rid of all these little ridges and stuff. So right now I'm just uh, placing the hinges on it so I can you know get a get an idea of where everything is going to line up. So with the, as far as I line the hinges up and then I have a drill bit um, that I take and if you see the drill bit right there, um, if you line it up so that when you put the screw behind it, you can barely see the threads behind the bit, um, it makes putting in the screws a lot easier. And it won't, when you put the screw in, it won't bulge the wood out anywhere, which is nice. So we're just putting the stain on right now, just rubbing it on with a rag. Um, let it sit for a couple minutes and then wipe off all the extra. So I'm going to do these two sides first, weigh a little bit, and then do the, the top and bottom. I'm using this wood finish, it's early American. Alright, now I just have them stood up and drying. You can see the the holes from the hardware that I pulled out so I could stain it. I just had the hardware in there so I could line everything up right. So I'll let it dry here for a couple hours and I'll put the hinges back on and everything should be done. And there it is. Got the little playing pieces inside of it. It's got plenty of room for more. And as you can see from this, the beads barely even come up to the top of the board, so there's more than enough room when this comes down and closes. And then when this locks on top of there, 
It uh, keeps the whole thing from opening. So even if I lift up on the top board, there's no way that those marbles are gonna come out of there. That's it.